everyone welcome back to my channel my name is faith i'm a men's personal style consultant and personal shopper based in lagos nigeria in today's video we are going to be unboxing but we are not styling today because i'm going to be using this opportunity to answer some of the questions i have gotten on my two personal shopping videos i've gotten quite a number of questions and i've received a number of emails and i just want to say a big thank you to every single one that has taken the time out to watch that video found it insightful dropped a comment sent an email inquired about my service and if i have a training or a course on personal shopping and even booked a consultation with me to start their personal shopping business i'm truly grateful to you all and in this video i'm going to be taking questions that i saw on these two videos i've responded to those questions quite all right but i just thought this would be questions that many people still seek answers to so why not do a video to address these issues all together i'll try my best to be as succinct as possible but still be very detailed but before we go into the questions let's unbox these babies as you can see i have literally unboxed them yes <laughs> but i'm going to play over a video that i have taken of these items when i was unboxing them so that you can see them in their beauty and we have this box it's a DHL package. If you watch my previous personal shopping videos, you know I talked about being able to fast track your orders and use services like DHL, UPS. So this is what we did for this item. And this is a Tory Burke order. There is a post here. And it's so cute guys i'm putting the names of the items and the price on the screen for you to see this is what is inside it's the cutest purse i've ever seen in a long time and it has this really wide strap shoulder detachable handle for your cross body very stunning so beautiful as you can see yeah that is it you will see a proper video at the end of this video of these stunning items and obviously this is to prove that i not only shop for men i shop for ladies as well this order is for a female client of mine and the second item here is this tory birch sandal we're going to see it together is the classic miller embossed snake leather sandal i already put my card inside and there is this care instruction from Tory book it comes with a dust bag as always and we have this this is what is inside this box as you can see it is really really stunning it is beautiful guys look at that it's really nice that's what is in this first box i'll just put this aside quickly and in this second box are just skincare products for my clients it's from lovely skin lovely skin they put a sample thingy here with all their thank you whatever and we have this la roche eczema soothing relief cream the reason why i'm unboxing this is to also let you know there are certain things that you can still ship in that are not contraband or anything like i mentioned in my other video this is a supplement yeah so now let's go straight into today's video i have written down these questions so that i don't lose my train of thought and i am dealing with each question in as much detail as possible the first question is how to price your personal shopping business if you are based in nigeria and honestly the personal shopping industry in nigeria is not regulated so there is no like fixed price for anything what i would advise is to think of a commission that you know is going to work for you is commission based meaning that you get a percentage of the cost of items that you are sourcing for your clients i think it's the same even with food personal shopping business so it's best to decide what commission works for you many personal shoppers stay within the 10 to 15 20 percent range it really depends on how they are getting the items shopped either they are shopping directly using an agent where there are extra charges you just need to decide and sit with your calculations to see what is going to work for you and how much you want to make on every item that you assist a client to order also in determining the different percentages that you want to use for your commission you can decide to have a range of lesser percentage depending on the cost of the item for instance if you're going to be charging 10 percent for items maybe you can decide that okay if i'm getting orders as much as two thousand pounds or three thousand dollars or whatever the higher the amount of orders we are getting maybe you'll be able to reduce the commission to say okay the higher it is the lesser commission i'm going to get for instance if you're getting the order of two thousand pounds you can decide that okay i'm going to get 7.5 percent 
as commission for this item that you are buying but if you are shopping items that are below like 500 pounds like that you can decide that you're going to leave your commission to 10 percent 15 percent it really depends on you to be honest and it also depends on the mode by which you are using to shop these items because if you are going to be using a shipping agent you also have to pay certain charges and you have to incorporate all of these different charges into your pricing as well you also need to alert the client that this is your commission separate from these charges so you don't need to model things or push for what i used to do when i started by not being clear about which charge is which charge because i was trying to beat my price down to appeal to clients but it doesn't work that way you're going to lose you're going to you're going to be at a loss so it's best to let the client know that this is shipping fee this is handling fee and this is my commission all right so when you are calculating all the entire fees make sure that your commission is distinct so that whatever happens you know that this is your own commission on the cost of items that you are placing an order on behalf of your clients for the second question is how do i make payments on international websites and this person said that their access dollar card doesn't work i have a client that came through my initial video and she booked a consultation and we actually tried to use i can't i think it's zenit bank or maybe also access bank as well she actually got a dollar card you know we have the naira mastercard and we have a dollar card she got a dollar card and she made some purchases with the dollar card and they actually went through the only problem was that we did not know that there were extra charges that the bank here in Nigeria was going to charge per dollar. So she had already bought the dollar at black market rate. Then the bank charged extra again. So it was as if she bought a dollar for almost a thousand naira. It was very painful. So that was something that she decided as an option to try out. Because to be very honest, when I started, I used to use my card, my Naira MasterCard. But now we know what has happened to our cards. They are restricted. And even the CBN has literally remove the minimum spend that we can do on our naira mastercard and even the dollar cards are not working they are not reliable there are exorbitant charges on them so if you are lucky and you have a dollar card that works or a visa card that works honestly go for it because the charges are usually um like slightly cheaper than if you would use a virtual dollar card which is the option i'm going to give to you to use a virtual dollar card that's if you don't have a visa card honestly a nigerian dollar card is still expensive to use at the end of the day and some websites will not accept the dollar card which is what i think this person asking this question is saying that a card did not work so if you are in that category the other alternative is to get a virtual dollar card there are quite a number of fintech apps these days that provide virtual dollar cards we have alert we have cheaper we have payday we have wallet africa we have butter there are quite a number of them out there clasher and so on that provide you with a dollar card a virtual dollar card and these dollar cards actually work it's just that you need to know the rates which you also see on the apps before you purchase your dollar and process your order the only reason why i can't recommend a specific dollar card is because all of them have issues one time or the other is either customer care is not going through or you are trying to buy dollar your money is hanging or something but trust me you will eventually find one that works for you so what i'll just advise is that you do your personal research i know quite a number of influencers have been influencing for these virtual dollar cards and even when they influence you still see people drop comments like it didn't work for me i had issues their customer care is not responsive blah 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 so honestly i would just say that you should do your findings look at reviews and find the one that you think has minimal risk and you can try out all right because these virtual dollar cards actually work to be honest the other alternative is to make sure you get an intermediary shopper meaning someone that is based in the country where you are shopping that can help you do the shopping and help you to change naira for either dollar or pounds whatever currency that you are shopping in if you have a friend that has traveled us we have a lot of people that have jackpot meaning emigrated you can speak to them and you know come to an agreement say maybe you give them a percentage or something something if they have the time and they can assist you to source dollar wherever they are or the foreign currency wherever they are because even when they are there they will also have bureau they change people that buy naira wherever they are that's another alternative i can recommend to you another alternative is to use a shipping agent that actually helps clients to shop meaning you as a personal shopper you are the client but the contract is that they will help you to shop meaning that you will send the list that your client sends to you to them for them to do the shopping and then they will give you your quotes in naira there are also quite a number of shippers that do that as well you just need to do your findings there are plenty on instagram the reason why i'm very skeptical to recommend anything is because there is no company there's no shipping company cargo agent that does not have their own flaws so i don't want to recommend something and they'll be like oh i recommended this and didn't work 
for me that's one two is this video is not sponsored and i'm not about to recommend things on an unsponsored video anyway so what i would say what i personally used to do is to just search on instagram on google um, and i would just do us to nigeria cargo and i will see if they have a website if they have a whatsapp number i try to contact them i get their charges i ask them these questions can you help me shop how much will you get how much is the commission blah 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 do you understand so that you weigh different options i do that sometimes randomly just to know that i have backup plan because you can't just be with one person in this business things happen the other ship i was using in the u.s just woke up one day and said they were no longer doing the business and i was left stranded so things like that happen and it's best to always have a plan b when it comes to how you're going to shop for your clients because the only reason why clients are coming to meet you is because they also can't shop on their own and they want these authentic items and they also don't want to have to be tracing or following up with shipments and all of that that's why they've come to meet you and you have to find a way to meet that need because that's the only reason why you are going to be relevant anyway the next question is how do you grow the personal shopping business in nigeria and honestly the answer to this is quite simple be very very authentic with the way you are doing your own personal shopping and also decide which niche you want to stay especially for fashion do you want to stay in the low rank items or you want to do a little bit of low and then high street or you want to do luxury or you want to do high end it really helps you to pick a niche all right it helps it's not like you can't do both for instance i shop high street items and i shop luxury items like the terrible you just saw but the thing is that if someone wants to buy some other things that are very very cheap i will tell them the cost of the shipping for them to weigh it themselves because sometimes shipping costs will be more than the item you want to buy and so it's not worth it i would just recommend if they know any store in nigeria that they've already shipped it down you can just buy it the only way you can grow your business is to be authentic to be transparent as well let your clients know what your shipping charges are the other charges and the shipping duration don't say that you will get your items in five days when you know that's not true then you start apologizing or you start avoiding their calls you have to be able to build trust that way by being transparent with every charge let them know for instance this particular item i ordered for a client when i sent the invoice i had underquoted for sales tax us sales tax what i did was i ordered the item i used my money to pay for the difference i ordered it and when it landed i explained to her and i sent her a screenshot that i underquoted by the time i got to check out the sales tax was different if i was very dodgy with the way sales tax is because i want to pad it i want to add my own money to it i won't be able to ask her to refund me and she gladly refunded me so the only way you can grow that business is to build trust in your clients that's one two be very aware of what's happening in the industry whatever it is that you are shopping whether you're shopping for men or for women be alert like be very fast to know when there's a sale when there's no sale when one thing is happening when something is trending when something you know will appeal to your clients you are basically trying to give your clients what they want so that they will always need to use your service another thing is to be very consistent showing up on social media platforms regardless of the platform you have chosen whether it's instagram or tiktok or youtube show up every time let them know that you are there especially when you are starting out like be in our faces to say i'm your personal shopper have you seen how people that are selling gadgets are especially all these um accessories that we use for content creation ring light tripod all these things they are there every day every <laughs> every day so that even when you don't need something you start thinking ah maybe i need this table stand tripod they are always there that's the way to grow in this business you constantly be in the faces of your clients and of course if you can afford this when you are starting out do promotions do ads on facebook cross posts don't just stay on instagram move your posts to facebook some people are on facebook some people are on twitter i see a lot of businesses on twitter i've been on twitter recently this year and i've been seeing so many people on twitter like selling their business so choose the one that works for you and literally be in their faces and please don't be shy to let people know you are now a personal shopper this is what you do the only way you can gain confidence to tell them that they should come and trust you with their ad and money is when you are showing that you know the industry you know that this is having a sale then subscribe to the different brands that you are shopping from subscribe even if you are using a shipper you subscribe use your email address so that you'll be the first to be notified of any deal and you can just take a screenshot and tell your clients that ah this brand just sent me an email it's like oh wow you're in touch with the brand yeah 
that way you are growing your business you are one step ahead you are able to give them what's the latest in the industry and they are always coming to you like ah please oh faith let me know when there's a sale oh, because they know that you'll be the first to know and how will you be the first to know because you are subscribed to their newsletter because sometimes they will put the things on their newsletters first before they put it on their instagram pages all right the fourth question is how do you source for clients well it's the same with <laughs> It's, it's a similar answer to what I just said on how to grow the business. You have to pick somewhere to start. Social media is free to use. That's where you can get most clients from. Talk to your friends, talk to your family members, you know, jump on whatever trend you can jump on to let people know you are selling something. You can even start with buying things for yourself. The person that did a consultation with me, she shopped things for herself. The things she shopped with that dollar card were for herself. And then she put all these items. She said she just wanted to see the timeline if she, you know, just to test the waters. So she bought fashion items for herself and then she took pictures and put them out and said i'm now your personal shopper your go-to personal shopper in abuja all right and she started having clients and of course she had been telling her friends that she wants to do this business she wants to start it she wants to and then if you're a lady it's quite easy you can buy things for yourself style them you don't have to be a stylist just wear them and say look at this item look at this bag you can carry you know just infuse something fun for them to know ah about it personal shopper you know you understand what i mean like show yourself show what you can do show the brands do a little bit of behind the scenes whether you are shopping items whether you are unboxing items you just everything is content guys everything is content all right so that is how you can build your clientele the way to source for clients again is when i started i looked out for people that i wanted to patronize me and i kind of went into their dms on linkedin actually because most of them were like i had profile people on linkedin and i just told them this is what i do i'm a personal shopper in case you need an immense personal stylist in case you need this let me know of course not all of them responded i don't even think anybody responded but at least it's there and i was showing up on my linkedin as who i am and also on youtube and who knows you don't know who's going to see you, you don't know who's going to refer someone to you this client i ordered for is a friend one of my followers and she referred her to me all right so that's how you can source for clients speak to people let them know don't keep quiet about the business that you are starting nobody's going to know if you don't talk about it number five is how do clients send money i think this person is trying to say how how do we make clients pay for your services and i'm guessing this person is requesting outside of nigeria if you have clients that are internationally based yeah you don't have to restrict yourself to only shopping for people in nigeria you can have people that are abroad i want to buy things from here in nigeria so how do you make payments if it's an international client that doesn't have a naira account or they, there's no way to send money to their naira account i think you can use fintech apps as well open a pay stack store or something something open uh i think butter there are quite a number of fintech apps now where you can open payment links for people that are outside of nigeria to pay into and then the fintech platform will now remit it into your own nigerian bank account but you can look that up there are quite a number of them paystack is what i use for my bookings and i know that they are also international as well if you are outside the country i don't know how paypal we don't have paypal here like we can't i don't know if we can receive money with paypal in nigeria but i know there are fintech apps where you can and you can go old school and just said western union <laughs> all right so i hope that's what this person is asking let me know if you need clarity on that number six is how do i structure my personal shopping business this person talked about developing a questionnaire to take on clients information and requests and honestly this is such a brilliant question and a brilliant idea this was not a question the person was yeah it was kind of a question person was asking if she wasn't doing too much or he wasn't doing too much and i was like no you're not doing too much to have a questionnaire like just open a simple google forms put certain questions there to gather your clients info like their email addresses phone numbers or whatsapp or whatever it is and tell them to write inside the box what they want to order i do that for when you want me to search for the items for you my search service which is a concierge service is not free i talked about it in my previous video how i used to search for free and it was time consuming and i was losing money and then i'll finish and they'll say they didn't see anything so i monetized it all right so if you come to me and say you want something but you don't know where to look i would propose my concierge service to you and tell you the cost and send you my form the google form link for you to input what you are looking for what you want me to search all right so that way i have your details there's no way you're going to fill the google forms without your email address or a whatsapp number or phone number so that helps you to build a clientele base you have the about data 
Twitter. You can send them emails. You can send them information about deals, about sales. You can be one step ahead to, you know, building trust in your clients and making them think of you as their preferred personal shopper. So that's one way you can structure your business as well. And the last question, which is a bonus question, I've kind of answered it is how to build trust in clients. I've said it to be very transparent and be very authentic in your own style of personal shopping. Don't do what you don't want to do because another personal shopper is doing it. For instance, when I started personal shopping, I used to put chocolates and whatnot into my packages and biscuits and whatnot. And I did it because I wanted to at the time, but also because that was what many people were doing. Eventually, I saw that it wasn't sustainable because I don't know how to buy cheap stuff and how much was my profit. And I realized that even if you buy things from Gucci, they won't put chocolates inside. They <laughs> The box is going to come the way it is. So I'm like, okay, what, 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 what am I doing? So I just had to be realistic with my own services and my own business. What can my business afford? If your business cannot afford a paper bag, please don't stress yourself. Many people will not carry the paper bag after you've delivered it. Just find a convenient way and a very neat way to deliver items to your clients. So build trust in your clients by being authentic and transparent with every service terms and conditions. Write it there. Even your rate, you are still going to pay charges. When the item comes, there are still things that are going into its manpower of packaging the items and all of that you need to pay yourself appropriately for doing the work of a personal shopper be as authentic as possible don't lie to your clients that the rate is 780 when it's not and if your rate is 780 just stand by it like write it they don't just send ambiguous this is the total of your break it down let them know exactly what the what how is the total 700,000 how did we arrive at 700,000 do you understand break it down because that's something I used to do when I first started I wasn't as transparent and I thought if I was too transparent my clients would think i'm too expensive but the truth is that if you are transparent the clients that want to stay will stay all right they would have had someone tell me ah, i think your charge is more expensive than other personal shoppers charge and i said it's totally fine honestly if you find someone cheaper that gives the same quality of service just go with them but i would not compromise and cheat myself because i'm trying to be like other personal shoppers or i'm trying to be the most affordable one people will come to you they will come to you all right so this is where i'm going to be stopping the video today i hope these questions have been helpful if you have more questions feel free to drop in the comment section and if you know that you really want more like you actually need guidance on how to kickstart your personal shopping business especially in the fashion industry and you are based in nigeria don't hesitate to send an email to me or use the services link in my about section to book a consultation i actually created a consultation just for personal shopping i created it because i've got quite a number of emails and questions and whatnot so i created that so take advantage of it and honestly it's not expensive i think it's about 30 35 000 naira it's not expensive and you would get value for your money i'll be as transparent as possible help you to come up with your pricing and all of that how you can stand out how you can sustain yourself um as a personal shopper here in nigeria and if you have more questions for me feel free to drop it and if you are new here please 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 don't leave without subscribing this has been such a long video i didn't think it would be this long but yeah i just wanted to be as detailed as possible and i hope you found it insightful thank you very much for watching please subscribe share with someone that is thinking of starting a personal shopping business or has started one and is quite frustrated or tired or confused and um i'll see you in my next video bye